So the Conan Exiles dev team have released another blog post in preparation for update 3.0, this time focusing on the admittedly controversial Battle Pass and Black Lotus Bazaar. This blog post aims to clear up questions and concerns, so let's take a look at what is being said. The blog post starts off with a statement that update 3.0 will see an upgrade in the way that both free and paid content are being released within Conan. Funcom are committed to developing Conan Exiles for many more years into the future, and with the new Aegis system and the Battle Pass it will be used to craft more evenly paced free content updates, and allow players so inclined to support the game's growth in return for exclusive cosmetic rewards. When update 3.0 hits we'll see three new tabs in the menu, Challenges, Battle Pass and Bazaar. This part was mentioned in the livestream but it's worth going over again. The Battle Pass has 60 levels of progression, which can be earned by completing challenges. Each level has a reward, and whilst some are free, the majority will be attained through the Battle Pass. You'll have to buy the Battle Pass if you want all the rewards for hopefully a reasonable price, I'm hoping it's around the $10 mark, and then of course you can earn all the rewards on every level. If you choose to buy the pass after you've already progressed through some or all of the levels, you can gain those rewards retroactively, so you never miss out if you purchase the Battle Pass late. It also doesn't seem like you get any XP bonus for actually buying the Battle Pass, so if you're undecided you could of course level the Battle Pass all the way up, and then if you decide you want it, you could buy it just before it resets. Funcom states that they have said from the beginning of development that they did not want to sell power. The Battle Pass is intended to replace the previous DLC system and will only offer cosmetic items. Armor, weapons, building pieces etc will all have base game equivalents in terms of stats, exactly the same as the traditional DLC offerings. You'll also be able to use the new weapons and armors as illusions on different pieces of gear through the new Thaumaturgy bench coming with sorcery, and there are no experience boosts or items that give you an advantage in PvP in the Battle Pass. The Age of Sorcery Battle Pass includes a good amount of free items, one of them being a Spell Flask. These are 5 stack, 1 use items that are designed to introduce players to sorcery, allowing you to cast one of the new spells, presumably without the corruption investment. These are designed to introduce people to sorcery without having to fully invest into the playstyle, and shouldn't disrupt PvP or general multiplayer gameplay, because they can only ever be earned and used once, so you can't continually redeem more. So something that's probably on a lot of people's minds, what exactly is in the Battle Pass? The Age of Sorcery Battle Pass will include armors, weapons, building pieces, pets, emotes, decorations, flasks, war paints, mounts, saddles, and crom coins. Most of them are themed around sorcery, such as magic armor, colored wall torches, and rune carved building pieces. Even the mounts are designed as undead mounts, which is really cool. The crom coins I just mentioned are the new virtual currency for Conan, and what will be used to purchase the Battle Pass and stuff from the Black Lotus Bazaar. These can be earned every few levels of the Battle Pass, and it's set up so that if you buy the Battle Pass and complete it, you will earn exactly enough Chrome Coins to purchase the next one. In theory, if you complete every Battle Pass fully, you only ever have to buy the first one using real money. This is something I've seen be successful in other games, the most recent example that comes to mind is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, and it's definitely a much more friendly way to offer this Battle Pass to dedicated players. Also, the Battle Passes are designed to tell a story rather than just be kind of tacked on in a very gamey way, so each Battle Pass page you progress will tell the story of how sorcery began to infiltrate the Exiled Lands. I think that part will definitely appeal to the lore fiends out there, like myself. Now for the Black Lotus Bazaar. Here you can purchase cosmetics individually or in small bundles. An example of that is if you're only really interested in building pieces and not weapons or armour, then you can simply choose the building pieces and not have to purchase the weapons in a bundle. There doesn't appear to be any FOMO mechanics here, which I know is something that people have mentioned a lot, as whilst there are a limited number of items in the bazaar at any given time, they rotate out and back in, apparently based on demand, though it will be interesting to see how that demand based rotation manifests. It was said many times in the dev stream that things will 100% always come back into the store. It was also further mentioned in the dev stream that they're open to doing a more catalogue style store in the future where everything is always available for purchase but the backlog of content to support that just simply is not there yet. Something else mentioned is that when a new age begins and the new battle pass starts, you won't be able to earn the items you didn't reach in the previous pass. That being said, Funcom may rotate modified versions of them into the bazaar in the future, though they are closely monitoring community feedback on this aspect. Do leave a comment and let me know what you think of this, I don't mind it myself, but I'd still very much like to see older battle passes remain purchasable and progressible in the future.
So how do you progress the battle pass? It's all through challenges. There are five rotating challenges of varying difficulties that give certain amounts of XP. When you finish one, it is replaced infinitely by a new random challenge, so there are no hard caps on how much XP you can earn in a day. However, that being said, every day you will receive 5 challenge XP multipliers, and you can stack up to a total of 25, so theoretically, if you don't play for 4 days, you can come back on the 5th to blitz some challenges and you don't lose any XP. Every completed challenge uses up a multiplier, increasing the battle pass XP you earn from challenge completion. You can also re-roll your challenges 3 times a day, so if you get a really difficult challenge that you really don't want to do, you can re-roll it. This will, however, re-roll all 5 challenges at once, so it's a sort of risk-reward mechanic. Challenges will vary between defeating enemies, gathering materials, etc, though I imagine there may be boss or mini-boss challenges in there at the higher end of the difficulty. The goal is to make it so that you don't really have to go far out of your way to complete most challenges, though they did say on the dev stream it's intended to encourage some more exploration, rather than just sitting in your base or going around farming resources. The rate of progression is really important, and as mentioned in the dev stream, it actually seems reasonable. Each battle pass will last for about 13 weeks, and the goal was to balance progress to be satisfying, rather than either too easy or overly grindy. In practice, if you play at least one hour a week on two separate occasions, so two hours, two days, you should be able to complete the battle pass before the next one comes out. If you play a single two hour session, that should also be possible, though you may need to target some of the more difficult challenges. This is a sort of ballpark estimate of what the time requirement is, and honestly, it seems reasonable. I know plenty of people out there, especially my viewers, which tend to trend a little bit higher on the age demographic, might not have tons of time to play between family and work requirements, so balancing for that makes sense and seems very player friendly. Progression is also linear, requiring 1000 XP per level, so the grind does not get exponentially harder. Perhaps the most important detail here is that each battle pass is a chapter in an age. Update 3.0 will usher in the Age of Sorcery, which will be split into multiple chapters, with each chapter including a major, free content update. That means we could be getting these major updates every 13 weeks, which seems like a steady and fairly healthy rate to be adding new content and keeping things fresh. Of course, that doesn't include smaller, minor updates that could come between those 13 week major updates. The Battle Pass and Bazaar will allow all these updates to be free, so players won't be separated between expansions. That was a major issue with Siptar regardless of how much you liked it, in that if you didn't want to drop $20 you couldn't join your friends on the new map. That never feels good, so keeping all players on an even playing field going forward will be a massive boon to the game. Of course, Funcom is still going to be monitoring feedback, and there may be some extra tweaking to some of the details and the numbers before release if Funcom feels that certain things are either underperforming or overperforming. I will admit, I was cautious about this idea at first, but overall, I'm actually looking forward to the Battle Pass. I have always detested microtransactions, and I still fondly remember making videos criticising Call of Duty in the past, and I still maintain that most companies do MTX badly. However, battle passes are seemingly the way of modern gaming to boost engagement and keep people playing, and I know that I prefer battle passes to loot boxes. Of course, there will be some people out there that still don't like it, and not everyone is going to like it. However, this seems like a solid way to ensure the future of Conan Exiles. This is a game that many people want to see succeed. Nobody wants to watch their games slowly die. I've already suffered through the slow deaths of Dirty Bomb, Team Fortress 2, Friday the 13th The Game and plenty of other titles I've really enjoyed, and I don't wish that upon Conan Exiles. If cosmetic, optional microtransactions are the price to pay, then I'm happy to have it because the alternative is basically letting Conan slowly die. The dev team behind Conan seems more focused than ever, and personally I'm looking forward to seeing what they will be able to do with this revenue source to allow for regular and free major updates in the future, but as always, do let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoy my content, all the links to my Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Patreon, Host Havoc affiliate page, NordVPN discount and NordPass discount are available in the description below. However, of course, you can simply just leave a like, a comment or subscribe, any of those are very greatly appreciated. Patrons get a bunch of nice benefits including sneak peeks of videos, your name in every video, custom made wallpapers in 1080p and 4k resolutions, full size build blueprints, discord roles and more. As always, a massive thanks to our patrons Sadalot, Randar, Connor, Ivy, Torn, Ill-Fated, CoffeeMan04, Jacques, Marion Ladd, Baron, Ghosty Pants, Ryan, Ben, Alfric, 
Eagle Rose, Melanie, and X Screech's X. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.